Hi there guys, my name is Danielle, you can call me Danny, and welcome to my channel. I know this is a very different um, view of me. Sorry, I'm trying to get a good English. <laughs> but I wanted to say something that's been on my mind. And I have tried recording this video a lot of times and none of them seemed right i'm sorry if i keep wiggling i just i don't know how to i don't know so this is the way i think i should make this video there's 100 face to face to you super close not in a like a professional setting or how i usually do my videos because this is a real thing that's happening to me and i want you guys to know so as you guys know, I announced a break in like, I think it was like early September to like, no, I think it was like late September or whatever. I announced a break and I said I was going through some personal issues. Um, I have gotten lots of comments, I guess I could say, and DMs and stuff like that asking, you know, if I'm okay and, you know, what's happening and stuff like that. And I, you know, I do, I always say, oh, I'm doing fine. Thanks for wondering. But the truth is, I'm not really doing fine. <laughs> um, I guess I'm just going to start from the beginning. And hopefully I won't confuse you. Because it is a confusing thing. Um, a few years ago, I was diagnosed with sleep apnea. And if you do not know what sleep apnea is, it's basically someone who has a complication while sleeping. And it could be like they don't breathe. It could be that like maybe their tongue like slips back to the back of their throat to make them stop breathing. Or it can be like too much weight on them and it's not letting them breathe. It could be like a bunch of things. And so I was diagnosed with that. They first found it when I was... I want to say when I was like 19 I want to say and I would stop breathing for like maybe a minute like not even a full minute yet and then I just go back to regular breathing but as the years went on it would increasingly get worse I guess you could say and so then we tried different methods to try to fix it and then we realized that I wasn't getting better. Um, my sleep apnea got so bad to the point where even when I would sleep, I would stop breathe, but my body would not automatically wake myself up or make me start breathing again. So, <sighs> there, so that is something that's been happening to me. And my body has been getting so much worse that uh, when I'm sitting down, even, my breathing is irregular too. So sometimes when I'm breathing, I like I just stop breathing altogether. And my brain won't automatically think to, oh, you, you got to breathe. You know, keep, go back to breathing. I have to physically like... <sighs> Like, I don't know how to explain it. It's so weird to explain it because it's, I don't know, it's just a weird situation happening. But it basically when I'm awake, I stop breathing as well. And it's really hard for me to get my breathings going. And it's complicated, I guess. Um, I... have been working with doctors to try to fix this with like various methods. Um, basically, how this hap- we, well, we've tried diets, we've tried pills, we've tried, you know, different types of ways to see if we can get this fixed. Um, I was first introduced to this next form of uh, 
Um, so now that my breathing is so severe to the point where it happens when I'm awake, it is time, it was time to go to the most drastic measure. And it was surgery. And this specific surgery is called gastric surgery. If you don't know what that is, it's basically um, something that older people get roughly around like 40s or yeah, like roughly early 40s to late to like early 50s or whatever. They get this surgery to cut their stomach to help them stay a healthy weight so that they're able to live longer. But in my case, they decided that this surgery would help me if they cut my stomach and help putting so much pressure on my other organs so then I can start breathing regularly again. And lots of people get this mixed up because I don't know if it comes as a surprise to you, but I am a hefty girl. Um, I have a round face. I have very broad shoulders. Um, I have very thick thighs. Um, and, you know, I've never been ashamed to show them. I've never been ashamed to, you know, be who I am. I am very much about bo body positivity. So I don't want people thinking me getting this surgery is because I want to lose weight. Um, because that's what this surgery is meant for, for people to lose weight. But for me, but for me, it's to help me live longer, basically. It's to help me live a normal life. Um, so at the beginning of this year, I finally said, all right, let's do the surgery then. So I went into the waiting list to get into the program for the gastric surgery. I can only speak on Iowa terms, but in Iowa, it can take years to get off the waiting list to get this surgery. And after that, even like while you're on the waiting list, they only take six people every six months. I was fortunate enough to only be on the waiting list for three months and start the process to prepare myself for this surgery. Um, during your process, you go through various diets, pills, and things like that to get you familiarized for how your lifestyle is going to be after surgery. After I did a few months of those, the doctors would say if I was ready to keep going to the next level. And I was very fortunate enough to continue to the next level by September. Um, this process can take months to even years so I was very blessed and fortunate enough to really really want this and complete the process in just a matter of months so by September I was given a thumbs up to continue my process and I was um, taken to the next level so that is when they gave me my surgery date and that is when I would start meeting with my surgeons and meet with my nurses and my team and stuff. Basically the people that are going to be watching me my whole life. Um, but yes, I always thank God because this process was, it should have been really long. I should not have surpassed a huge waiting list. Because there was hundreds of people on that waiting list. But they told me that I got jumped to the front because I was such a rare case. Because, like I said, this surgery was supposed to be made for people who are older and wanting to keep their healthy lifestyle so they can live longer. I am I need this so I can live past my 20s, basically. And I know it's, like, scary to think that, but, I mean, it's real. It's my life. It's what's happening to me and um I haven't really told people that I'm going through this um only like my 
immediate family, like my parents and my siblings know I'm doing this. Only a handful of friends know I'm going through this. Uh, my pastors know I'm going through this. Or my youth pastors, I should say, know I'm going through this. And I've been so... Uh, torn between myself to let people know about this because like I said the surgery that I'm going through is a complicated surgery and I'm a rare case of it and because of my rare case I have a different death rate than the normal person who would be getting this surgery. The normal person, like I said, who's an average age of like early 40s to early 50s would have a 5% chance of death in this situation. But because of me and my situation, because of my breathing and everything like that, and of course how I'm like 20 years younger than the recommended age to get this surgery, because of all those, and you put them all together, my death rate raises to 25%. And that's been very scary for me. Because I've had to prepare stuff for if I pass away. I had to write a will. I had to write what I want to be done with me if I pass away. I, I, had, I have had to think about things that... A normal 21 year old should not have to think about and it's very you know sad and scary to think that I'm being like I'm going through this right now but I have so much faith in my God that I will make it but also I have so much faith that if I don't make it then it's his will you know um so I have decided to finally tell you guys um that this is why I took a break to sort of focus on this and my surgery and to let you guys know what's happening. I appreciate you guys for being so worried about me because you guys have seen that I've been going to the hospital a lot and I want to thank you for being worried and I want to thank you for still being here for me even though I haven't been uploading or anything. Um, by the time you guys are watching this right now, I'm actually at the hospital right now. And I'm getting my pre-op. If you don't know what a pre-op is, it's basically when the surgeons and everything take you through their team, take you through their rooms, and basically like through the like a dry process of what is happening, going to happen on your um, surgery date. <sighs> and... That's scary because when I'm filming this, this is two days away and I'm super scared because after this, then my surgery is in two and a half weeks and that's also very scary. Um, I... I don't know what much to say. Like I said, I had to go through a lot of processing. Um, I had to go through things that I have to get prepared for if I pass away. I also had to think about the consequences for after my surgery if I survive, such as like eating certain foods that I won't be able to have anymore, drinking certain things that I won't be able to drink anymore, to even... The possibility that I may never be able to have my own child. That was a big one that I had to think about very hard because of the operation. My body will not be able to give the nutrients to a child that it needs because I won't be, I myself will not be able to even give my own self the nutrients that I need. So that's why I will have to be on pills for the rest of my life. So that is also something that I have had to process. And it's it's been a journey so far. And I was 
blessed enough to go through this very strong, I would say, because knowing what's going to happen after the surgery, like all the pros and especially all the cons that could happen after the surgery, I still went through with it. Because of how young I am, I have so many other consequences it is to myself. But also the pros will be that I get to live long enough to see my baby brothers graduate college or graduate high school. I'll be able to see my parents grow old. I'll be, I'll be able to, you know, get married if I, you know, want to get married one day. Or, you know, grow old to see my friends and family make their own families to me maybe adopting children or anything. Because I could take the chance to have children, but I don't know if I want to do that to my body. And I don't know if I want to do that to the child because then that child would be malnourished. And a lot of complications could happen to that child. And I don't, like, if that child could come out with, like, one arm and one leg, and I will love them with all my heart. But I personally don't want to put them through that life struggle if they don't need to. But that's something that future Danny has to worry about. And right now, present Danny is going through the hospital and getting all her ducks in a row and getting prepared for the surgery. I am having my surgery on December 5th of 2019. So in just a few weeks, I'm prepared to live through this process and start a long road to recovery. I am also preparing myself to not live through this process and have all my things arranged for if I don't make it. So this is why I have been gone. This is why I took a break, which I hope you guys can understand. I know there's probably lots of questions and I've already kept you guys here long enough, but I just wanna thank you guys for always being here and always supporting me no matter what. And I appreciate your prayers, your thoughts and everything you guys send me. I love you guys so much, and I know you guys love me too from just the way you guys have stuck here with me, and I will keep you updated. I m most likely will not upload another video until after my surgery, so I just want to say thank you, and I just wanted to let you guys know what is happening, because you deserve to know. And I also don't deserve to be going through this alone. So it's nice to finally let it out to others instead of keeping it bottled up, you know. But, um, yeah. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching and being here. And I'll see you in my next video.